Are yeah. we recording? Yes. We're good. We We're got good. Th- cool. We got double We're thumbs up. Rolling. Oh my god. Okay. Well, uh, first, Apollo Suns. Let's gar- grab some names. <laughs> okay. Who's joining us today? A fraction <laughs> of the Apollo Suns with us. Yeah. Uh, three sevens here. There's. Uh, well, I'm Ed Derosha. I'm the uh, guitarist and quote unquote band manager leader. Nice person. Uh, the Burton uh, Cummings of the group. Oh, that's mean. <laughs> that's so uh, mean. Uh, Fuck you. Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> this interview is over. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Was, we're, I knew that was going to be bad. Oh, uh, man, that is the meanest thing you I'm have sorry, ever I'm said sorry. to anyone. Love, love his music. Not a, not a lovely person. Um, uh, I take it back, I swear. <laughs> uh, Anatole Rennie, uh, the keyboardist and synth. Yeah. yeah. And? Uh, my name is Glenn Radley. I play drums, and I'm the resident D and D aficionado. Oh, okay. that is very true. Oh, okay. okay. So, with the number of you touring right now, how many is it? Eight or nine? Uh, seven. Seven. Okay, seven. So you, I don't know anything about D and D, but are you guys running campaigns? We did like two sessions, but it got to be kind of a lot of uh, mental energy for me as the DM. However, me and our trombonist play D and D on the internet together in a video game format. How do you do that? Is that like? Um, you just like hooking up on a Discord call? Or? So there's a, <laughs> I can't believe I'm giving this spiel on a podcast, but Let's here we go. Heard it a couple times. Okay, so in 2002, a video game called Neverwinter Nights was launched. It's a one to one adaptation of Dungeons and Dragons version 3.5 as a multiplayer video game that you can create your own worlds in. I play on a 20 year old server in which 2,000 other nerds are role playing and playing uh, graphically represented. D and D in real time at all times, twenty four seven, all oh, the time. Shit. So you're like you twenty year old server. So you're like in a crew of like second or third generation nerds. Yeah. If we're on like the eighth or yeah. ninth. Yeah, there's like in game <laughs> libraries with like decades of history. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I actually really liked playing D and D. We spent like a full eight hours like rolling for our characters and wow. coming up and like I was super into it. I was I was, I was, I was, I was kind of bummed that we couldn't continue playing. But yeah, as Glenn said, it's uh you know being a DM is like. That was also, generated. I think, our most grueling tour rooting wise. Yeah, that 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 <laughs> say, What are we on leg four right now? Yeah, the leg leg two is pretty pretty brutal. So, yeah. There we go. We got a sound check happening in the background. Yeah, yeah. A little you King know. Bull in there. Yeah, we're, re- we're recording this uh, mere hours before King Bull and the Apollo Suns take the stage here at Bose. So if the game is going twenty four seven, I'm just I'm curious. <laughs> this is like piqued your interest now. <laughs> Because I also don't play, but I am very curious. So when you're on the road, how do you keep up? Because you guys are on the road a ton. Yeah, I mean, like, it's a persistent world. It's like a micro, massive multiplayer online role-playing game. Yeah. So there's, like, a persistent world that has, like, respawning monsters, quests, and, like, different factions and cities to live in. And people just basically play act and fully mechanically play characters in a meta environment that's constantly being updated with new content and new classes and monsters, et cetera. Wow. wow. For like, free. There's no like, fees either. Well, basically, whenever there's Wi Fi, Glenn is. It, I was just going to say, that sounds like a full time job. This is all I do. Do you get a commission that. on this sales pitch? or No, I'm just a <laughs> zealot. I'm like a religious <laughs> zealot for this yeah, video game. Hey, uh, speaking of, like, where's the sponsorship for yeah, Neverwinter yeah. Nights? Yeah. Like, give us it's some an Alberta money company, here. actually. Uh, so, Beamdog is based in Alberta, and most of the developers of the game are actually from this okay, province. Okay, so. Shout out Beamdog. Yeah, like, wow. how, how, how about a couple ga- uh, tanks of gas here in a hotel room? Like, Jesus. <laughs> Come on. Glenn's given you multiple hours of his life. Yeah, I, I give this spiel dozens of times. So. Yeah, there are people all across North America of yeah. vague familiarity. Now, how often do you recruit? Like, do you... Well, it's the, well, we don't want you to use the word oh. recruit. It, 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 Ed, it's a Ed, little put your microphone up to your mouth. <laughs> it's a little Mormony. We don't, we don't yeah, do that around here. I do, but anyway. You just say he's a religious zealot. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, it's great. But yeah, that's my primary hobby within and without this band. So there we are. Well, let's talk about the band then. Uh, are you sure? How does D and D fit into the creative process of Apollo? Sun? <laughs> I mean, okay, you know so we, we roll for key, and then <laughs> yeah. whoever you know. But but you have to do a charisma yeah. check to see whose melody yeah. gets to stay into the. What's cool about keys though is it's a D twelve because there's twelve chromatic keys. <laughs> right, perfect. No, it's not true at all. I, I find it funny when people think we're cool, quote unquote, and then we blow their minds by talking about like Star Trek and yeah, Dune. We're dweebs. And yeah, D&D. Yeah, and yeah. We, uh, we're in Killington, Vermont, and these <laughs> guys are hanging out with us, and they and then we just started yeah, like- intense mountain bikers who like 
you know, have broken multiple bones and like spend all their time and money. They're just rich cyborgs who yeah. mountain bike with like titanium limbs. That's not an exaggeration. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> one of them they, said, uh, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but one of them said, uh, <laughs> in reference to his titanium shoulder, best 45 grand I ever spent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. All right. So, America. Like, these, these intense, you know, active people and, you know, we're, we're chatting, having a good time and they, they legitimately thought that we were, you know, on their level of coolness. Yeah. <laughs> until at some point the conversation swung towards D and D. Yeah. Like. And then they got up and left. Or? Oh no no no! They they were just still fascinated with yeah. the the duality of our personalities. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> A bunch of nerdy rock stars, <laughs> but we're camping out in the middle of the wilderness because we can't afford hotel rooms in uh, Vermont. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was actually really lovely. I, 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 Killington was super nice. Yeah. So I made a, a what <clears throat> I thought was a joke when I first saw you guys today, and how many shows have you played? And you said seventy, and yeah, seventy in the first six and a half months of twenty twenty two. Yeah, right. I, I think that's only starting in April Fuck. as well. I think we've been home for, I want to say, f we've been home for maybe like 15 days in total, 15 or 16. Since April. Since mm -hmm. April. Maybe 20. No. Like 20 20-ish 20 days, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so, <laughs> it was not a joke. <laughs> uh, no, it was not a joke. That's crazy. We've been to yeah. 33 states. Wow. Yeah. I've never been to any of those places before. Yeah. Yeah. And then how long is the rest of the stretch? Uh, we've got two more weeks on this one. Then we are then we have some shows in and out kind of uh, over the next couple months after that. And then we're on the road again for about two months Yeah. after that. Bro broken up a little bit. Uh, we, we learned our lesson a little bit. <laughs> I mean, this one's been great, but the, the second run was grueling yeah. um, on the east coast of the U.S. We just overextended. and uh, Numerous 13-hour drives. Yeah. yeah. We'd only had eight days off before it like we toured for a solid month which was like awesome, five weeks I and think. then had only eight days off which is like just barely enough time to like unpack uh, unpack yeah. yeah and then back at it for another like five, five weeks, weeks and that we ate shit like <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of great stuff on that tour Absolutely. but it was it was a slog and there was a couple it was pittsburgh i was like i'm just you know what? Fuck it. Ben's done. I, I just want to go home. I want to go home and sleep. I hate this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then luckily we didn't do that. Or I didn't say that out loud. Okay. So that was just, that was just an it internal. It was just in my head. Like, okay, it, was, okay. it was a particularly hard night. And I was like, this sucks. And why am I doing it? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. But I, I think those moments are super normal, uh, especially when you're like really going for something, uh, which I think we are. We're really putting our asses where our full ass are. you know full ass yeah there are no half asses so here. what is the key thing that draws you back in so you're in that and then something happens is it on stage is it something that happens Great on nights, the road like like super awesome festival shows like folly fest which we just played in new brunswick yeah. or what tonight is going to be at bose which is like one of our favorite venues in canada cool. for sure yeah um just like playing to a packed yeah. room just like feeling all that energy yeah. like makes up for five days of, of slog you, you, you know what it was on that one particularly? I was having a super rough day in the van, and we had like a 10-hour drive. And I was just like emotionally done, spiritually just destroyed. I was like, I just want to go home, and I'm away from my family. I'm paying for everything. Last night, we made 100 bucks, and it cost $800 a day to yeah. to tour to make sure everyone gets paid. Uh, the gas and the – and you know what it was? It was someone from somewhere – uh, I think like we had just played a show somewhere and they texted being like they messaged the band being like oh you know your music means so much and it's so good and, and it's so lovely and I really appreciate what you people are doing and just to go out and play music as much as you do to yeah. share that live <laughs> music and, and like a hectic like, like a hectic schedule and I was like Oh, God damn it! <laughs> They're bringing me back. <laughs> and 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 at that point, you realize that you kind of like obviously you have you're only accountable to yourself with like your mental health and how you're feeling, but also like you kind of I feel like this not 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 to get like um, too like into it, but I feel like you kind of have a responsibility at a certain point when you're like releasing art and it starts talking to more people and resonating yeah you're kind of a part of that person's life in a little way and it's something to not be taken lightly it's not like i, I find it harder and harder to um 
even want to stop. Yeah. <laughs> but you do have to. But you do have to balance, right? Because yeah. the streams are like yeah. terrible to be at. You got to so do... know how to rest. Yeah. And, like, be like, I don't want to create anything today. Fuck it, I'm done. You know, like, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean, I I respect your commitment because we had you at Communal Creative Studios uh, uh, towards the end of 21, and um, I think we were all pretty blown away, not just by your talent but by your efficiency. I mean, it was fucking <laughs> wild. You guys had like you unpacked, you set up. I think you may have checked for like. 30 seconds and then you banged out some songs yeah. and every single one of you are pretty remarkably talented musicians so thank you thank be you a goddamn shame if uh the trials and tribulations of the road put an end to that yeah um it's it's pretty much that like a great show can reinvigorate can bring morale back but um i think we're getting better at um but also we're spending a lot of time together so yeah you know um which is both can be really great but also super hard sometimes <laughs> and you're like like i'm not in the mood i'm not in the mood for any of it is there <laughs> someone a... says something you're like ooh, <laughs> but you're like but it's you you're taking it like that sometimes you is, know? is there a way to to just isolate yourself when you're doing 13 hour drives in the van no. like just both no. headphones on or like that's no. pretty much it. yeah Head, headphones is the most privacy you'll get yeah. for the for the five weeks yeah I, I take i take license to fuck off you know and leave and just be a, like alone yeah. in the world especially at music festivals that's mm -hmm. like my mo i kind of oh, just yeah. evaporate into the background of the hippies and the weirdos and i start I, I pretty much say like here's our loading here's sound check here's downbeat don't be late to any of them yeah. do whatever the fuck you want um just don't be like th we are on the job Yep. Yeah. But like, but you know, go try not to get too drunk or stoned at the incorrect time. Yeah, totally. And how? What's the success rate for you, Glenn? <laughs> well, I mean, we we've only just... we've only had to talk. To, I think we've only had to talk to Glenn once, and it was after Garberville in California. Yeah. When like, yeah, I think we've only had to actually seriously be like, maybe don't have five drinks I'm before not, we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like. Uh, I don't like. I'm more of a stoned all day guy than a drinking yeah. in the middle of the day. Today was an exception, though. I drank Bud Light from 10 a.m. <laughs> for nihilistic reasons we got free drinks well we got there were free drinks they were free drinks <laughs> they're from now the stampede. yeah you're from the calgary stampede so we purloined those they told us to take all the stuff they did the yeah room. i'm and just you did. using the word yeah. purloined no calorie left behind no resource you, left behind you don't ask twice yeah. nobody no. says take it <laughs> yeah. okay it doesn't matter who Thank it you, is coca-cola our corporate <laughs> overlord we will take all of this stuff um yeah so you did you played the stampede two days ago right the coke that stage? was yesterday oh it was yesterday yeah, yeah. yesterday yes. morning we doubled it yesterday Ridge, calgary and then oh no you no, calgary, played calgary played two calgary. gigs yeah like oh my god well the other on the on the other run we did five or six shows in three days and mu those shows were multiple sets each show i think one of those shows was four 45 minute sets yeah in different states in different states we traveled right. and it was fucking wild but it's not actually not a surprise <laughs> like patrick again. had just said the way you guys came into the studios unloaded did your like yeah. i could totally oh yeah like i yeah. mean we're fast what we do, yeah. but sometimes we're up to the mercy of either the venue or the sound crew not knowing what they're doing yeah at one festival it was just we were it was yeah there's like there's like pros and cons to a festival being anarchic and crusty you know yeah. uh, sometimes the people are really great but sometimes they are like three hours behind yeah. and they're, they're 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 it's continuing to get further behind it's like they're not gaining ground yeah like, it's happening no urgency no urgency yeah. Yeah. Urgency is the word. Yeah, we, we found like in some places in the Pacific Northwest, like around Seattle, it's just like the vibe is the sound check. The sound tech will show up 15 minutes before the band is supposed to start, and will take their fucking time. And it's like, well, there are three bands on the bill, each band with like five to seven members, and you're gonna show up 15 minutes before. <laughs> And saunter and saunter around. <laughs> Damn, that's that's the one thing that can piss off impatient people is saunter. Yes. <laughs> and like, what, is it a power move? The venue for I think, two so. hours. I think it's just a power move, right? Like, why, like I don't they know, know why you doing. would do that. Like, I just to to me, yeah. 
my anxious and patient person and patient like inner self is like how could you just be aware or how could you just walk through a situation where people are aware of you being slow you know <laughs> like they're just seven to 15 people just aware of the fact that you're relaxed right now no no i'm very very nervous how let's do you get going how do you deal with people like that in the dnd world that aren't moving along. Well, you know, it's weird. Like you, it's you a kill them. <laughs> you kill them. It's a multiplayer. Glenn's game. a big bully. Wow. You know, I've gotten deep into the role play aspect of the game, which is almost second lifey in terms of like immersion level. But at these, at this point, I just like to kill things. I like to go <laughs> into the dungeons and just murder hobo my way through entire species of things. Okay. And all right. get their gold and take it back to the merchants and make many dollars. So you're a tyrant in your. Well, life. I play evil characters and good characters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we found ourselves back to D and D. Right? It's super annoying. We 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 were we were um, we were uh, creating our characters, and I just wanted to be like a neutral, like a lawfully neutral necromancer, which you're not allowed to do. Why can't you raise dead things and not be evil? Honestly, you like, wanted to be chaotic evil. Let's just. You were you were poorly hiding that. You were poorly hiding <laughs> your desire to throw grenades into our orderly I fun good I never threw time. one grenade. In fact, I fell on a couple of grenades. By fighting that damn spider monkey. That's true. Wow. That's true. <laughs> wow. I can almost envision this story myself. Oh, I'm totally. I've written it. paragraphs of expository text yeah. to properly dis describe the world they explored. I generally wanted to mutilate any dead body, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's the things you can do when you role play. I would never do that in real life, but do I want That's to? That's why you do it, right? Yeah. Like, like. No comment. So <laughs> some comment, but plead the fifth. Um, back to the show tonight. Actually, no. Before we go into that, Calgary Stampede. So you played afternoon on the Coke stage, right? Yeah. yeah. Was How was it? Uh, it was really fun. The uh, there was some people, but it's like a daytime stage yep uh well, <laughs> it's a weird stage setup this year too yeah that it was, middle row is yeah it what was, the hell is that it was like kind of off to at nowhere well and is I it saw, the same sorry is it the same no, it's, it's on in the, the same spot no no, no okay. it's on the complete because it used to be that near the, the like the front stage or the front entrance yeah, yeah. Like, oh what a great idea yeah and now that way people will it. see you yeah so it was I, like we were tucked in yeah i think the the uh space for the audience is a lot bigger that's but, cool. yeah. And like I saw a show there. I've seen I've been down to the Stampede twice in the last week and I saw Cartel Madras on oh, Saturday. Good. Oh my so god. Good. So good. And they played at seven PM, so the crowd was whatever, but everyone just went to stage right. And so yeah. like the the whole left side was like I don't know, that that yeah. eight. so basically um, there's a stage and then the crowd and right down the middle, splitting the crowd in half is like a five foot walkway lane kind of thing. to the yeah, sound yeah, yeah. tent. Yeah. It seemed uh, like it was like set up for like a big act so that they could like walk through the crowd halfway through their set and like yeah. kind of for security to do it because i saw lex was on oh, fire the other yeah, night yeah, yeah. that place was packed oh yeah and yeah security um, was hopping down and pulling yeah. people out i have i have two things to say about the stampede i got to uh use tash sultana's oh, wow. toilet to shit which i then took a picture <laughs> of and sent it to my friend who has a huge crush on them uh, <laughs> Of the shit. I was, no, <laughs> no, of course not. no, no. Thank you for clarifying. Um, yeah. I got to meet Carly Ray Jepsen's crew, nice. which is kind of oh, cool. Nice. And uh, so, so the sound, the stage crew loved us, and they were like, the the production or the stage manager was like, "You guys are like the best daytime band I've seen in a while." And I was like, "Man, we really killed on the late night stages too." <laughs> it's kind of like little tongue in cheek, like because like early on in our career, well, I think we're still early on, depending on where where you look at us. Um, or how the rest of the tour goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, festivals will put us on during the middle of the day, which is fine. We're super pumped to play every festival. But then now summer's starting to get. It's like, oh, we need to put these guys on the late night stage, or like, because we're. It just makes more sense with the energy that we have during shows. Like yeah. we can do any type of show, play any type of venue, like a tiny restaurant, brewery stuff. Yeah, we kill those too. But the most fun ones are like late night at a festival, and I think. That's that's where we're yeah. best received. Well, that's how I'd, I envision my preference for watching you guys. Is yeah. Maybe definitely have a having a buzz on and uh, just sinking into your tunes, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's pretty high energy all the time. I personally ruin a shirt a night. Really? Oh, yeah. Yes. I, I sweat. I lose shades of brightness on any garment I wear due to the soakedness. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I I think I could do with like three shirt costume mm. changes because uh yeah it's like 
pouring yeah. a waterfall. I get Whenever salt I wring out my shirt, it's, yeah, salt stains a lot. It's yeah. weird. You know, I'm losing salinity, you know? Usually I'm a lot more pissed off, but I just sweat that salt right out. Well, yeah. we'll make sure you got some. We'll deliver some fries inside of the <laughs> yeah. right. You can just starch me those. up, salt now me you, up. You can't pack that much, especially with seven of you going together. So what do you do? Are you buying new shirts in every town? I, when I what? say ruin, I mean I punish myself by wearing the next day. Okay. Punish yourself yeah. or punish the, the rest band. of the band. Collateral <laughs> damage <laughs> isn't really in my calculation here. I mean, I'm just trying to survive. And, and, and honestly, in, in the realm of smells that are in the van, Glenn's shirts are not okay. the worst. Yeah, we're more I've worried heard. about just other other smells. <laughs> and, um, I, I generally, what I'll do is if we have anywhere that we're, we're sleeping, I will hang up my shirts to dry through the evening, yep. and then I, I'll bring like essential oils or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and then spritz them on. But I had to get rid of a, um, for instance, a guitar strap because the vinegary smell never came out of it. No matter how many times I'd wash it, it was so. It gross. was like a chemical infusion. Like it oh, was. Oh yeah. Fused. It, it smelled like <laughs> it smelled like vinegary sweat from yeah. years of touring it. And, and would it would it catch you mid set too? Oh yeah, it was starting <laughs> to. I would miss it. I'm like, oh 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 god, <laughs> what I is? Wish you still had that. I was strap. just gonna I'd say, there's for is, that all night. Is there an Apollo Suns Hall of Fame where this stuff goes great. to reside? Yeah. Or what, like, <laughs> you know, it should have. It's it, it's probably in a landfill in um in, in New Hampshire. I'm just, that, that's where it broke. I'm curious what color it would burn. Yeah, I don't know. all the, go- <laughs> all the ghosts of gigs past. <laughs> Bright green, yeah. Bright green. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, what are what is uh, what's going on tonight? What are you guys planning? Like, at th- like, so- like musically? Yeah, he wants a set list. I think. Is uh, oh, you want a set list? <laughs> no, no, no. I just want. What are you guys aiming to achieve when you're up there? Uh, I mean, I just want. Oh God, I just want people to go off into the night and have a great time. Have a uh, leave with a positive experience that uh basically i just want people to not be dicks to each other when they leave okay Um, i just want people to go be kind to each other through seeing a really nice or like having music or a piece of art touch them in a way that allows them to not be jerks to each other uh that's kind of my end goal (laughs) like like, like, just go be nice to each other we just had a great time i'm trying to replace my skull with a radar dish okay you know, I'm just trying to like. We can make that happen in Red Deer. <laughs> I'm we trying are in to just like get as perceptive as possible, and I feel like we've ground. You know, when people talk about the grind set, but you don't talk about how much you've ground. You know what I mean? But anyway, we ground a lot, trying to get, <laughs> trying to work on like music fundamentals and chops and shit as a band for quite a while over the last couple of years in shows. preparation for the records and the live shows. And thank you. So I feel like like that. Ha- like the technical and muscular stuff has allowed my brain to have more okay. headroom, the more headroom. It's e- more attainable yeah. right now. And, and especially as a band, I've noticed there's more and more times where we'll get into a, a thick, thick fucking groove that's mm. improvised. And, and you can tell by how the band is moving that everyone is, is in that state together. And then it's like, and then the audience catches it and they're like, Oh fuck, something's going down. The now. pocket, the yeah. pocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God, so deep. <laughs> yeah. And like when you're, you know, when you're not worrying about the technical stuff, when you're just in it, you're just more headroom to just like put on a better show. You know? Yeah. Is there a lot of room for improvisation in your set or oh, is yeah, it yeah. We've, yeah. Con- we've consciously been adding jam sections because I was like um, I, I I feel like we've talked about it a lot, but I, I was like, I really just want to improvise stuff because I, I trust the band more and more right. that we can like go out, go out, go out, keep it funky, keep it accessible, but keep it heady as well. And uh, and we, we also just like worked a lot on technique and now we're working on performance stuff of like, you know, having like shots in the horns and different way that we move that that way we can like convey that to the audience. Because if, if, if we're moving to the music like in like succinctly the audience will as well because yeah. we're like giving them the information of as of nerdy that. as our fans probably are they all, you, people listen with their eyes and and it's unavoidable like you, people want to feel visually engaged with what's going on they want to feel like an ephemeral like impact when the shorns move the shorns the horns move <laughs> along with an individual like rhythmic like little stab or whatever like there's like a kineticness to seeing someone move in tandem yes. with that you know you know like when when i when i was first in university and like you know 
learning to play, I, I had like this stupid elitist mindset of like, I'm going to sit at the piano and be totally rigid and just, you know, totally focus on the technique and all of that other stuff is just like showboating and doesn't matter. It distracts from the, but like now that I'm actually like a competent musician, <laughs> You're going crazy. Um, <laughs> like I, I'm actually like getting in it more and I, I just can't help myself but to move and honestly, like, it, it does, you know, if you're able to move and still execute the stuff correctly, like, that's that's even harder, you know? Um, and it's, but it is more authentic and, and more accessible. And it just, like, everyone's, everyone's having a much better time. And when you get into those jam spots, because there's seven of you, does it, like... Everybody get it like everybody's got to have a turn. So to we shine have like a traffic. Bit, we have like traffic directors. Like Aaron, our saxophonist, is like a. It's like if you put an orange vest and gave him a, like a pylon cone, he, he yeah, would just air traffic every, control. Just yep. like perfect. Just um, do this once. It's that person's turn, but with these people doing this thing, like it's very, yeah. very intricate. I always and and this is why I'm very um, hesitant to call myself the band leader, mainly because Aaron to me is more like the music musical director on stage where so, like Glenn, Bryn and I will kind of call things a little bit, but Aaron is so much like, yeah. like very, and, but we also like, I kind of also now want to, now that we're getting better at the, the trust and like really relying on each other of getting away from even just hand signals where we can almost intuitively as a band, because I've seen bands do that. Bands yeah. just like, will look at each other and be like, holy shit, did they just change keys, come up with a new melody and then add some shots like that without even doing anything i like i've seen bands do that and i, I, I want to get to that point where it's like like it's just like one mind it one no brain. everybody like, i do yeah. kind of like the hand signals a little bit because it lets the audience in oh, yeah. on what we're doing yep. and I, as as an audience member who's also a musician i love when bands do that mm -hmm. um but yeah no it, it is also super cool just to like yeah be able to like, like watching Fish jam, and it's not just a boring ass jam band jam, but it's like this musical craziness of multi genre, chaotic but super organized shit. You're like, holy fuck, Fish, you make me like twenty five minute guitar solos, and I and I'm a guitarist, and I hate that shit. I mean, they've, like, they've done so many psychedelics, though, that they are probably just on the same okay. frequency yeah. now, right? I mean, the Grateful Dead did it right. You you drink a tub full of acid, and then you make music. <laughs> you're either going to be amazing, or you're not coming back from that. Yeah. <laughs> there is no middle, there yeah. is no middle trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Music legacy or lobotomy. Let's find yeah. out. That's exactly Sid Barrett <laughs> yep. or awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, poor Sid. <laughs> well, you've given us a lot to look uh, forward to tonight and to look at specifically while you're playing. So I'm looking forward to that. Can't wait. And I just yeah. want to say before we wrap up, and I think I can speak for the band, from my limited perspective, my ignorance, just them being here, you're way better than Burton Cummings as a band leader. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so well, much. I don't think these guys would be here. I've you'd never be doing this interview <laughs> solo. God, That's right. true. I've never felt so or, validated. Or you'd in my be whole Randy life. Backman claiming you invented the Hendrix chord. <laughs> Man, I used to look up to those guys so much. Like I was a huge Guess Who fan yeah, growing the up. The Guess Who, right? They they have some great songs, they but do. they are yeah. just. And I know this is sacrilegious. We're in Canada, but like I've just heard nothing but horrible things about both of them. Like. Yeah. Well, what was heard... Burton's thing a couple of years ago? He was mad at it. There was a dance studio. He lives in like Moose Jaw. He lives in Moose Jaw. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and I think he lives either below or above a dance studio, like little kids dancing. And he was pissed off at the noise that they were making. I think he wanted the dance studio moved. Or, anyways, he complained about the kids wow. dancing. Wow. Yeah. Well, when you've earned that kind of I guess. clout, I mean, hey, in maybe Moose Jaw. Oh, right. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having it. us. Thank you. Thank you. The Road to the Stage is produced by Ryan Cooley and Riley Sir Yin at the Communal Creative Studios in Red Deer, Alberta. In partnership with Go Services Inc., Sawback Brewing Co., Tourism Red Deer, and Bose Bar and Stage. <laughs>